Good evening, everybody. Uh, I am Suraj Jengde. I'm a fellow here at the Harvard Kennedy School. Our Ambedkar Lecture Series is a segment uh, that is sponsored by Boston Study Group, a local Ambedkarite group uh, based out of New England area. Uh, this is a monthly lecture series that we conduct at Harvard University, and we have various guests coming uh, who discuss their topic, their books, their, their papers, uh, and then also their upcoming research projects. Uh, we've been having amazing uh, list of uh, researchers who have visited us and, uh, and also a scholar and activist. Um, our first uh, lecture series was uh, inaugurated by a very dynamic female speaker. Um, and again, uh, we've been having consistently uh, this dynamism continuing in, in that way. We have today uh, a, an, an, a sort of unusual speaker that we have to our audience that is usually engaging in, um, uh, in, in, in a very intellectual as well as activist dialogue. Today we are going to talk about novel, uh, a, a fiction work mm -hmm. uh, produced by a freshman, <laughs> uh, Susti Doke. Uh, she just joined BU and uh, this is her first year. And in her first year, she's already had a book out, uh, the book that we are discussing is Marine Ake. Uh, it's published by Rupa Publication. Uh, with a foreword by Ruskin Bond. Uh, I've gone through this book and, and I just, uh, I was in awe. I read this book while in, in three places, physically as well as uh, when I was in train, when I was in a, in, in, in a car, and once I was in a bus. So I have these different memories and specifically I read this when I was in a train from Nagpur to Nanded. So in Vidarbha, some of the stories are based in Vidarbha. Yeah. So I, I, I got the feeling when I saw the plantation outside the uh, and, and, and the kind of rustic, uh, raw soil that, that Susti talks about in this book. There are amazing chapters that take us to different varieties. Uh, the snake bite, mm -hmm. uh, for example, was one of a very, very, uh, it, 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 it got me to think more intensely about uh, how uh, the life is difficult in India. And of course, this, this book is based in, in a rural area, mostly in Vinarba. And, and that, of course, uh, Susti is going to talk more about it, her inspirations and why the book came about. But one of the things I personally found fascinating was, I think this is perhaps the first uh, 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 girl from the community uh, who has been the youngest to be published in a mainstream publication. So I think this is a very, uh, very interesting. And, and social media, personally, as I was talking to Susti, was, is abuzz. And, and they're very happy. And, and, and I think... This has led to think about some landmarking uh, events that, that you have set up. And we are specifically uh, very honored to have you speak, Susti, because I think uh, this book, as people will read, will, will find that it has its own uh, distinct flavor. Um, there are various questions we have, but before that, I'll just briefly talk, give an intro about Susti. She's a freshman. She's pursuing economics and mathematics at uh, Boston University. Uh, and she's been writing articles in newspapers since she was age of 13. Um, 13 is the age when she put her pen to paper and, and, and got, uh, got her, her writings uh, published in, in English language newspapers. Uh, she's brought up in towns and cities. And, and I think some of the stories that come out are from a grandparent's village in Maharashtra, uh, where she had <coughs> annual visits. Her parents took her and she observed it. And most of her, uh, you can see an anthropological survey that she does it and then she present in a fiction format this has been a popular form of writing uh, especially among the uh, <coughs> excuse me anthropological research works where uh, people have reported about the life and ethnography you have spent time in the community you have gathered the data and, and present. so it, it, it comes with an authoritative uh, research work uh, that this book has done um, she was fascinated by the way life in villages and therefore she has moved on together various real life incidents that she knows have taken place in people's life into a storyline. So whatever she have observed, she has put that into a storyline into the book. And then you can see that personalized nature coming out. Uh, Tamarind Ake forward was by the renowned author Ruskin Bond. Uh, all proceeds, by the way, of this books are going to go to NGO that Susti is associated with called Speed, which is Society for the Promotion of Education, Empowerment and Development. We are very honored to have you once again, Susti. And we look forward to the conversations. Thank you so much. That was a very flattering um, introduction. Um, so 
the first thing that I want to tell you all about Tamra Lake is that it is entirely based on real life events. Every little thing from the way that the kids are playing to um, the bigger events that happen in the book are all real stories that my parents and my grandparents told me. Um, and they told me about the struggles that they faced and to get to where they are right now. And a lot of the stories are also based on my own experiences and um, on my interaction with the villagers and the things that I saw, the things that I observed. Um, the idea of the book first struck me when I became aware of the problem of blue bulls eating farmers' crops. And I went, I went to see the farmland and I could see that there were acres and acres of land completely barren. And um, I talked to a couple of the farmers that I saw there and they told me that they, they'd entirely given up on farming because the problem of the bluebills had become so rampant. And they told me that the government was not doing anything at all. Um, no government department had come to visit them to ask them what the problem was or what they could do to help. And no action had been taken. All they did was tell the people they legalized the killing of the blue bulls. But it's not very, um, you can't expect an ordinary farmer just trying to do his job to kill a wild beast. Like that doesn't happen. And the government did not do anything. So all of them have virtually turned into landless laborers. Um, so this is one thing that I have mentioned in the book. Another thing that I've mentioned is the uh, condition that the school is in. This again, I had visited the school in my own village and I could see that there were just two classrooms with about 30, 30 kids in total. And the two classrooms had only two teachers and, who would also come in rotation and they would teach all the subjects. And um, in one of the classrooms were grades one, two and three. And in the second classroom were grades four and five. And that was it. That was the entire school. And so it, it was really um, weird for me because I have always grown up in um, towns and cities and I'd never seen something like this. And it was so this is, again, something that I have picked out from my own experience and put in the book. Um, another thing that I saw when I was talking to the people um, was the fact that um, girls were taken out of school because it was hard for them to pay the school fees and then they were married off. And then kids were taken out of school because the parents thought that that would just mean that they would have a, they would have more number of hands to work and to earn, to work in the fields. And so it's very sad that such things happen and the fact that even the, the fact that just like one generation my dad moved out from that village and came to the city because of which I am here sitting in front of you and speaking to you so that is what education does and the fact that those children are devoid of those opportunities because of because even though the school exists it's barely any provision at all. Um, apart from that, there are a couple of teachers in another school that I went to who are very extremely involved in panchayati politics and teaching is just um, a side business for them. Um, and they don't teach uh, the kids very well and then they help them pass their exams through some sort of cheating. And then again, even though that was a much better built school building and they had many better facilities, but if that's what the teachers are like, again, the foundation is lost. Um, and then when, when the school was doing a few things right, another school that I went to, the, the children had no motivation to, the only motivation for them to come to school was the fact that they would get a midday meal and not because they had to study or they had to do something. And so I, there was this sort of aimlessness in the village, in the people, that even though they had so many issues, 
they just accepted it. And even though they didn't know a lot about the world outside of the village, they would they were completely fine with that. Um, another couple of things that I've mentioned are the high rates of interest and the fact that sometimes there's no money to treat illnesses. And um, so all of these issues I have mentioned in the book. And apart from the issues, just to give a flavor, a local flavor, I've mentioned about a couple of superstitions, like the snake bite was mentioned, um, about how uh, when someone is bitten by a snake, instead of taking him to the doctor, they will call the Veds and take him to the temple and make him drink a glass of oil and things like that. And I have also mentioned um, this tradition, this Adivasi tradition called Zari, in which there is a huge greasy pole that you erect and then a boy is supposed to climb to the top of the pole and get the money that's on the top. And then there are a couple of uh, girls at the bottom with um, sticks and they're trying to bring the guy down. And then if the guy suc succeeds in reaching the top, he has to choose who he has to marry from the girls that were trying to bring him down. So this was very interesting. Um, this is again from my village. Um, the Zari pole broke in my village last year because someone was backing up a tractor and the tractor hit the pole and so it fell. And then the Zari celebration was just about to come up. And so everyone was very tense. So what do we do now? And so, um, so they went to some forest to get the pole. And they told me how they were sneaking away from the forest guards. And it was dark and it was raining. And somehow they got in. And they were very tired and they were injured. But then, you know, the satisfaction in the end. So that's another thing that I've mentioned. So this is one thing that I'm proud of about the book, that I have virtually made nothing up. Everything is real. Um, right. And so all these issues, all the superstitions, everything is glued together by the story of a family of four um, that spans across generations. And like it usually happens, I've tried not to depict the villagers as just their issues because um, I could see that my friends in towns and cities, they knew the facts, but they could not relate to their issues. The issues did not have a face to them. They were just, they just knew that this happens, but they could not realize the fact that this happens to actual people who face actual struggles and that is their life, and this is our life. Um, and so they would make some comments that were sometimes ignorant, sometimes indifferent. And I do have the exposure to both of those sides. I do have the exposure to the city as well as the village, so I should do something with that. And so that was the idea behind the book, to show what village life is like from the perspective of the people living it. And so I like to say that even though Tamarindake is not a real story, since it is a mosaic of so many real stories, it very well could have been. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody would like to offer comments, question? My, my interest is uh, what, what has inspired you to write this story? What is the starting point that you thought of, okay, let me write the story about uh, this life? It was kind of obvious to me. I knew that I had to write a book because I'd already written so many articles and newspapers. And so what next? So just to take it to the next level, I was like, fine, I'll write a book. And then the topic of the book was just very obvious to me because like I said, there are so many people that I know who... Um, my friends would visit my house and my grandmother would be there, my grandfather would be there and they would be wearing the lugra and the dhoti <laughs> and then my friends would be like, what is happening? <laughs> so I could, it was, the gap was very evident to me. So it was um, just a very obvious sort of thing.
thing in my head it just clicked that i just have to write about this yeah why do i this is a very important question but i just want to you know so that i can like have more context on it. because i also spent five years of my life three years in Vidarbha, so mm-hmm. i can tell so by maharashtra culture right then like the real rural maharashtra mm-hmm. but then i want to know like because as an outsider you know i just want to know like i'm just curious you know from there and then i can mm-hmm. I, 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 we can like have the conversation so as in why the name is tamil yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. um there are a couple of things um the main reason is um uh, that the story is a very bitter sweet sort of um story because it's uh, it's a story focused on relationships um siblings relationships friends and uh, husband and wife lovers so it's very happy and at the same time it's very bitter sweet because there are so many issues mentioned and mm. the end is sort of a cliffhanger so it is um kind of a mix of uh, sweet and sour and so that's what i meant i meant to use tamarind as an adjective so as to say sweet and sour pain <laughs> so you know susti uh, what what do you have what do you have tried to do here is this is what would happen uh, in the colonial era even now mm-hmm. um, because this genre is stated as uh, as fiction mm-hmm. right uh, but srushti what she manages and i think this is a quality of an effective writer where they bring out real stories presented in a form which are sort of readable mm-hmm. because it's fiction and i yeah. think that that thin gap that you have maintained is i think one of the achievements of this book <laughs> is is because um when we read a book for example the book you have written if it would have been had some academic reference it would have as well been an academic uh, treatise of anthropology sociology yeah. mostly anthropology yeah. right uh, and and but but then what you do is you remove that part and and you tell us how the life is mm-hmm. and and how you have observed it and i think when you say what strike me when in your in your in your description or in your talk is you wanted to present the stories through the perspective yeah of the people themselves right not through the perspective of me and i think i think that is very evident in here but also there is a thing that you are also there very much present you know with the way we we see you experience um, the culture right so uh, one of the uh, sort of landmarking uh, objectives of any book is to you know uh be part of the audience it's like if i if i read this book i should be able to tell you all that i read this book mm-hmm. and i think this book is attempting to do that it's like if you read that uh, there is somewhere like snake bite is in in, in yeah. because it's just you know how they are you know treated and that so <clears throat> how did you decide it like of course you said you were writing articles from age of 13 so it was a gradual process now what's next here you write a book so you wrote a book right and again the question will be what's next but before you go there could you tell us how did your uh, grandparents react to when you were telling them that you are writing a book about the life of a village i know that they were happy but i don't think they understood the magnitude of what was going to happen because i don't think they understand how many people are reading this right now and how how their stories are traveling across nations to right now harvard and they have no idea what harvard is or you know they just like i said the people in the village is is happy in the village and they are very very happy and they don't know how to read but they'll sit with my book with the pages open and they'll flip through the pages they look at my picture at the at the back cover and so they are very ecstatic um but i don't think they understand the magnitude of it like this picture <laughs> <laughs> okay i mean if i you know picking up from what you were saying and what you say i am also like see, i i pretend to do ethnographic work like academically speaking and one of our intention is to look at things from the point of view of people to be steady right so you 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 mentioned that as well so but then village life in maharashtra to me is very complex 
you know, experience across caste, across class, and the way in which, you know, this caste dynamics works out, even within personal relationships, you know, with whom you talk to, with, with whom you, you meet every day, like, even here today, like, right? So I'm just, like, I, I have not read the book, you know, that is an asking. Where does this story you know, fall into your into your book? I'm just interested. I'm just curious to know that because I have not read the book, you know. So I, I'm just like wondering because I've like spent some of my life there. Right. I see how hard it is to to just you know in, in a typical rural Maharashtra, you know, given the caste and the caste the life path, the past life. So I'm just curious to know, like how much of your story is about rural Maharashtra? It is based. 100% in rural Maharashtra. Mm -hmm. I have, I haven't mentioned the um, social aspects of caste, etc., in it. Um, but it's, yeah, it's a hundred percent based on rural um, Maharashtra because that is, that's what my grandparents' world is, mm -hmm. and that's where my parents have come from, and that's where I go to visit once every year, and. You know, I have friends in the village who talk to me about what they are like, what, you know, life for them is like. They're telling me how it's such a huge deal for them to go from the village to Nagpur to college. And so, um, I mean, yeah, so just that much, just getting out of the village and going to a city for a little bit, that's as much as I diverge from rural life. Otherwise, it's 100% village life. So why do you think it's needed to write this story? My motivation was the gap that I saw between the understanding of my between my understanding of village life and my friends' understanding of village life mm -hmm. in cities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because they only knew that these are the issues that they face. There are high rates of interest. Mm -hmm. The government doesn't do anything, whatever, whatever. They had learned they had learned it as an answer to regurgitate in an exam. That's all it meant to them. It did not mean anything more to them. But I knew that I know actual people who go through these things and they have to, you know, find their way around them somehow. And so, um, you know, even when um, we, we would have dinner as a family and my grandparents would, you know, start telling me stories or my parents would start telling me stories. And then the next day I would wake up um, in that same ha same hangover of the stories. And then I'd go to school. And then everyone was just so oblivious of the fact that there is life outside of cities as well. Yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. The villagers are oblivious to the fact that there's life outside the village. Mm -hmm. And the city people are oblivious that there's life outside the city as well. Mm -hmm. You know, there are uh, there's life outside the city. They know that they, you know, New York, Paris and all. But, you know, they don't take a step back and see that these are also people in our country that such a majority of the population is facing all of this. And no. they just, you know. Yeah. Because I am very, like, I don't really read a lot of, like, you know, this kind of work. Mm -hmm. But then I remember reading Bremsen and some of Bremsen's work. Right. Where I get a very different sense of, like, you know, village, right? Mm -hmm. Where you see... I mean, he was not, uh, he doesn't necessarily, you know, always talk about that, but then you can see, you know, that the narratives and the tension, you know, in, within villages are very much apparent in his, in his writings, right? Mm -hmm. So that is where I'm coming from, you know, where I'm asking, you know, you know, I, 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 Gopur or something, it is something that, that, I, that I read about Brimson's. I mean, I've read some of his work when I was in, you know, in Maharashtra, so I'm just like asking him from, from that point of view, you know, do you have any intention to, to pain about you know the the, you know, the, the larger rural you know, uh, India is about. So I, I mean uh, this is just a kind of you know curiosity that I have. Are you are you trying to have a conversation with this kind of work? You know? I am I mean if so what what, what I'm telling means the the Prechan stories that mm -hmm. yeah means if you look at the time mm -hmm. it is around maybe 75, 80 years. Yeah yeah and Premchan has all those stories yeah. about yeah, on that period. So there is a lot of changes since that period. Too. Yeah. yeah, and definitely the life in the village has mm -hmm. been changed. Mm -hmm. It is not the same as what Brinchan has written at the time. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so I think uh, so we we just can't compare that whatever was happening in the different uh, period may be happening now also uh, in the villages. So that is one thing. So also, I think what Puya is getting at is, see, Premchand tried to present a discourse. He tried to tell us the story of, you know. So Puya perhaps is asking to you that, are you trying to also maybe define this kind of a, uh, are you onto something, something yeah. larger, which is beyond this book, right? Book always is beyond the book, as we all know. So did you have something that in mind or, you know, or, or where do you want to take this? Interesting question. Um, the idea behind me writing this was just the fact that I had to get it out of my head and yeah. tell other people that, you know, this also happens. Yeah. And, but after I, after the book came out, then I realized that it's not just about this book because there are so many people who have also come out of villages who are like, oh, this is my story. Everyone who reads it is like, oh, this is my life. This is my life. Yeah. And and all the proceeds from the sale are also going to an NGO um, that promotes education. And so now I realize that it was the, the purpose of the book was much larger than myself. It was, you know, the purpose was not to start a conversation, but I see lots of conversations starting. Exactly. So that, I'm glad about point. that. Yeah. Asking the question, right? yeah. That, that's what the book does. You know, especially in the American context, right? Mm -hmm. If you have to establish a certain framework, let's say it's a Donald Trump presidency mm -hmm. or Elizabeth Warren, you know, unless you have a book that kind of validates that, you know, there is, you know, so book book kind of creates that. that yeah. Way. So, Rusty, you tell me, for example, Sanjay Bhagat, who who's, who is born and brought up in Vidarbha, and now he's living in America, right? So, if someone like him reads, you know, he's been an executive engineer working in edit engineering services. Right. Do you think a book like this would be able to talk to him and maybe he could be visualizing, oh, this is also my life? I would think so if you've grown up there because the story is all about children. Um, the children are, uh, a few of the main characters are children. And so um, I've talked about how they go to a tamarind tree and they try to you know, pull the tamarind down and they make lollipops out of the tamarind. So all these little things, they go to the river to play and then one boy drowns in the river because it had rained the night before and about how uh, during festivities, this uh, the little boy, he, he wakes up and he sees that his mother is not around. So he's like, oh, thank God, she won't give me work now because if she sees me, she'll give me something to do. All these little things that... I think even if you haven't grown up in a village that you could relate to the, um, the to the childish fun. And uh, even apart from that, I feel like a lot of people have told me that it's a very simply written work. So uh, even if you haven't um, grown up there, because uh, I had also, while writing it, I'd also kept in mind my, my, fr my friends in the cities who had no idea about it. So I had to take them into consideration as well. So even if, so they haven't grown up um, in Vidarbha, but they relate to it as well. So I think you would find yeah. it interesting. Yeah. Please, no, that means I have not read, um, read this book, but I will definitely because I have a lot of memories from that means even if, uh, <laughs> the place where I was uh, born and I thought of, may not become under the, the village category, but I live the village life. Right. Uh, because the work, most of the things that they do in the village, uh, my mother and I used to do uh, that type of work. So, so definitely, I'm, I, I will be enjoying. So, I have one question, uh, for you. So, I know your father is an IPS officer. Yeah. And so, basically, that is a that falls under the Ethereum category, correct? Uh, as in, in in context of the Indian society, and. With that contest, you belong to the Epiphyllian family. So, how, how means, and you are visiting the villages and the people uh, who are living there, all the poor and the, and the community from where you have come from is all uh, discriminated uh, and all that. So, how, how you used to keep the balance between that Epiphyllian life and when you are going to the um, life in the villages? And uh, whether uh, this has any impact in the life from the village as any impact when you were living in the cities, uh, big places. 
I think people, a lot of people in the cities are too up in their heads about, you know, they think that the world revolves around them. But if you visit a village like that and you see how, it's a very humbling experience that, you know, when you, when you're in that village, if you act like you are in a city, no one's going to talk to you. You have to become one with them. And so I would, I would play cricket with the village kids and the ball would go in the well and then we would pull it out with the rope. And I would go to the farms and I would, you know, talk to them about, oh, you have to, oh, you have to work all day over here. You know, it's very hot and like, you know, you, we should, we should do a picnic sometime or something. So you really have to uh, b- become one with them. For me, I think it was, it, it's always been a part of my life because I have not known anything different. And so it wasn't much of an effort to, you know, balance um but i could see that but it was interesting to see when the two of my when the village aspect and the city aspect merged together when someone from the village came to my house in new delhi and so they would be very fascinated by the fact that i live on the fourth floor and you know i had to go up with the lift and my grandparents are not very comfortable with the lift you know <laughs> and so it was very interesting to um, see both of these aspects combined. Mm. So it was not much of a balancing act. It was just fun. Getting adjusted. Yeah. Just kind of yeah. Just interesting. You know, Susti, see, one of the book, what does it, it also talks about how kids live their life. Yeah. How adults are having their own issues, husband and wife, in, in a very authoritative tone. I, I was like... <laughs> You know, <laughs> how, how is it? You know, how is it possible? Like, uh, like this, this. You know, uh, the, there is a fight going on, um, and then, then you know, the chapter four then with uh, Yeshoda gets up, wipes a tear with her pallu, and walks away. I never wanted you to be my wife. I never wanted this life. Damn, kind of. You know, and and, and a married person would very well relate to, or someone who has been in a relationship with. Who knows about this, you know, and, and you, you just give it. How is it possible? I think from the beginning, this has been a very bad habit of mine. I, to a fault, put myself in other people's shoes. Like when I was a kid, I remember stopping at traffic lights and those kids would be knocking on our windows to give give them coins or whatever. And I would just, I would get so scared for them. Like, What if this was not my life? What if that was my life? And I would just get, it would completely shake me. And so I think um, it's just for some reason, I've always been able to put myself in other people's shoes. And for that reason, probably. I've <laughs> because, you know, there is, an, there is an example in this where kids are doing the spit. <laughs> How much they can put spit in their mouth. That's like a competition, right? <laughs> and, and many of this... In 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 Vidarbha they call potte. Potte <laughs> <laughs> you know, kind of they do this kind of stuff, right? So I I, I find that you know uh, I find that that that's also a description of a you have reached that scale. But here's what a here's how chapter four begins. Torrent again, you know, coming back to that, you know, and maybe if you can relate, raise your hand. <clears throat> Ragu, who is one of the protagonists, opens his eyes in the morning to discover that he's the only one still on the mattress, which makes him smile. He almost he had almost forgotten what day it is. He scrambles out of bed and peeks out the door to see where the elders of the house are. Now, I remember because I grew up in a house where you shared the mattress, they shared the bed. And space was always a problem, you know. But when you wake up and you realize that, oh, it was all for you. <laughs> it's just remarkable thing. Exactly. And your day becomes positive that nobody was behind, you know, next to me. Because I would always, you know, scramble and I would always make noise. I want the whole bed. And mother would then, you know, convince and say, oh, okay, mother, I don't want to share with my brother, yeah. right? And then you manage to put that here. Mm-hmm. And and someone like me, it just, it kind of flashed back. Um, when you do this, you also give a, a philosophical invitation uh, for many of us uh, who have not taken the minimalities of life. Uh, as 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 something very important part of you know right now we manage or we appreciate our one mattress kind of thing but the little bliss we had 
and yeah. and the comfort you know and 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 then and, and then you say you know he scrambles out of bed you know you, you you're just not waking up yeah you're scrambling out of bed you know that tiny detail is where you know i would imagine godadi we would sleep on a godadi and it's never it's never like you when you sleep on a mattress it's like clean it's yeah. always <laughs> scramble yeah. so I, i i found that uh, quite a remarkable uh, att- um, would did you re- feel yourself somewhere here doing this um i think in all of my characters and whatever they're all doing i again would try would put myself in in their heads and look at the situation through their eyes so for example when you mentioned about the husband and wife fighting i i put myself in that person's situation that if my partner was doing something like this what would go on in my head um and so uh, even though i have never slept on a mattress like that i've seen other in other people's houses in the village that you know um when i would just go go to chat with them they would tell me that oh this is where we this is how we live see you you would not know you live in a city very good natured key and uh, so at night we spread this thing and then we all sleep on this so just these little little things that i picked up from here and there and put them all together so i guess that's where all the detail comes from i think that is that is a very good achievement that you have been able to do that you know um shusti as you all know as puya has mentioned that uh, village is laden with this caste divide mm-hmm. right we always it's apparent you know it's it's dangerous and whenever i go to india i make a point of visiting either of villages and it's a very dangerous scenario if you are walking into a village because there are codes you need to follow if you step you know there is a there is a manwada there is maharwada there is even sub caste wise divisions you know and so so how did you manage to break those barriers or maybe what did you had access to all of the village and the villages or village that you did study how did you see caste being uh, perpetrated or did it didn't matter to you at all i actually did not see it at all maybe it was because um, everyone's like oh raju bhau matlab ips and uh, you know so everyone's very welcoming um uh, but maybe if things were different maybe i would have seen it but um i don't know thankfully i have not seen that in my own village and and, and that that is very much possible because in many villages also even if you are from the lower caste but somebody from your family has uh, in position like i as ips and all that the whole perspective of the village is changed mm. they 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 think that uh, now that man belongs to you because now your creditability is attached to his creditability so so that is how it means uh, even milinda samuel's uh, example uh, you see how this tells means his parents and uh, his family is yeah. like uh, revered like anything in his village yeah. and whereas everybody knows that he's from the lower caste so i think that is how it works village so, dynamics so you know so maybe that is one of the uh, interesting takes that uh, if 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 when achieves there is maybe maybe a possibility and also maybe there is a fear right i mean you are a daughter <laughs> of an ips <laughs> yeah. nobody wants to mess up with that person right nobody wants to go and tell you know uh, so maybe, but maybe you know in your in your future research if you if you or if your visits you know if you do maybe try to uh, the one of the things we would expect is to see how this play or does not play you know because yeah. if it doesn't play that means it's playing in different way yeah. you know if it's apparent or not apparent and you know doing nothing is also doing many things yeah so uh, you have done this and it's also uh, it kind of falls in various categories now tamarind ek uh, ruskin bond set could well be a film a motion uh, film and, and you know uh, and and we really hope that we see this on performing on the screen as well and and your audience was your friends uh, yeah. that that uh, so that's why i i go back to the question that there is a question online uh, it's asked by upali bhosle what age group is the target audience for the book when i was writing it the target audience was just people my age but now i feel like so much older people are also reading it because they feel that they can relate to it um so i the target audience was meant to be people my age but it turns out the target 
is whoever wants to read it can read it basically <laughs> yeah um do you plan to write any other book hopefully this will i mean i don't have any plans as yet but i mean fingers crossed it'll happen we should appreciate your maturity as well as uh, your precision um, to look at the things the way you have looked and the way you have articulated into this text thank you uh, in addition to what you have done uh, uh, by presenting the village life is also you have uh, given uh, some people uh, an understanding of the inner circles and i hope your friends whom you have written for and and people like them read this and consume yeah. this that this is about a life uh, what we miss and the essential element is about how this does not play when it comes to the relations of caste or tribal kind of inter uh, warfare that they have often especially vidarbha is not is infamous for that before you go one final question you know vidarbha is having this wildlife issue yeah. and you have been you, you began your talk by by talking about the books is there was there any at all any message or do you want to give about the wildlife or how it is being impacted or or is there is there any way uh, because uh, constantly we see uh the the cattle you know being you know uh, it, it's either been eaten by the wild animals or you know or people have been you know killing them uh not only uh, cattle but also there is a huge amount of threat of animals uh, through an environmentalist perspective did, did you observe anything at all that was relating to environment relating to mining for example or people displaced uh, or or there is no rain and there is a problem did you see anything at all um i think one rain is a problem and number two the wildlife i people are not i feel like people are not confronting the issue head on they're just accepting it the government is turning away and the people are turning away even though it affects them hugely and the animals are just coming and feasting and um i i don't think I'm not sure what the government is trying to achieve by legalizing killing the blue bulls because how many will you kill you know if you keep killing then then it will become an animal uh, protection issue and so something needs to be done and I'm not sure what but something needs to be done soon um yeah at your age people are looking for fame and they're looking for more likes and more instagram followers and 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 more facebook kind of you know techno millennial generation that is after something um and when they do something they want a huge credit for that and they also want to make it very much a pop consuming while you trusty uh, when you write a book you write a book in a language that is communicating to the audience that also trying to bridge a divide but also you are writing a book that has a social touch an element of social responsibility and you are trying to convey a message about the huge disparities that we have in india and in this age uh, coming out with this book and then making the proceeds go to ngo is i think tells a lot about how uh, when a woman from the community uh, is is in charge of of the role is always thinking about the priorities of the most marginalized most vulnerable and i think that has been uh, significantly achieving uh, we had very much enjoyed this presentation it was a very engaging uh, talk um uh, here at harvard university we are happy to host you thank you for having and, me and and boston city group again is, is is grateful for having you here thank, thank you. you thank you so much thank you for having me yeah.